This video is brought to you by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Los Angeles of all places was once known for having one of the best public transit systems in America? LA's transit, centered around their streetcars and the twin operators of the red cars and yellow cars, is actually largely responsible for how LA looks today. As the city developed, access to these streetcars meant that people could live in further out suburbs like San Bernardino, San Fernando, and Riverside. But then, all of that changed when General Motors came in and they bought up the streetcars so they could tear up the tracks and replace them with highways, forcing people to drive cars, many of which would conveniently be made by General Motors. Or at least that's how the simplest version of the narrative goes. In 1949, Firestone Tires, Standard Oil of California, Phillips Petroleum, General Motors, Mack Trucks, and several officers and directors from these companies were convicted in U.S. federal courts of conspiring to violate the Sherman Antitrust Act, a law meant to, sometimes, prevent the creation of monopolies. This has variously been referred to as the Great Streetcar Scandal, or the GM Streetcar Conspiracy, or various other names. But if you start to Google those things, you'll very quickly find sources telling you that actually this is all overblown, actually that's not really how it happened, actually this wasn't corporations exploiting ordinary people for their own profit, this was just natural market forces. And at this point you might be expecting me to say, BE SILENT CAPITALIST PROPAGANDIST FOR I CAN SEE THROUGH YOUR LIES. But, in a way, they are a little bit right. You know, I don't think that there's such thing as unbiased media. There's media that tells the truth and there's media that lies, but it's all made by people and people are going to always have some level of bias. Most of the time, bias in media doesn't look like the objective lies on like Fox News or OAN. Most of the time, it's about what stories you choose to tell and how you frame the stories. And that's often influenced more by subconscious beliefs than by any decision. I think that this is one of those instances. This is one of those instances where if you work for an outlet like Bloomberg, where everything that goes past you is from a capitalist perspective and leftist perspectives never even cross your mind, you'll see that the truth is more complicated than the usual simple story and you'll say, see, your anti-capitalist propaganda is wrong, I am proven right once again. Whereas someone like me looks at the truth of this story and I go, whoa, that actually makes it so much worse. The latter part of the story, the part that usually gets told, is that LA and other cities used to have these great streetcar systems. But as car companies got more and more powerful, they realized that these were an impediment to their profit, because so many people wouldn't want to buy cars if they had these great streetcar systems. So they bought up streetcar systems all over the country and converted them into bus routes, tearing up the rails and replacing them with highways. Then, when they inevitably began cutting back on buses, people had to buy their cars. All of that's true. All of that happened just the way that people say it did. But even before all of that happened, the streetcars were kind of already on their way out. The problem is that mass transit is just one of those things that's not going to be profitable in a lot of circumstances. In a few busy downtown routes, sure, but if you're relying only on the profit that you make from the transit systems themselves, then you're not going to build a lot of longer routes or a lot of routes that don't have the demand necessary to generate a profit. It's the same reason that the government runs schools and subsidizes flights to rural communities and runs the post office. So in LA and other cities, the tram operators didn't rely on the value created by fares to generate a profit. Their business model was that they would buy land, and then they would build a tram line out to that land, making that land more valuable, and then sell it for a profit. Do you see the problem with that though? Once you sell that land, those trams go back to being unprofitable money sinks, and so you have to repeat the whole process over again, and over again, and over again. But the more times you repeat that, the less profitable these new tram lines become, and the less profit you make by selling land that is increasingly further and further out from the city. So at some point this business is going to stop making sense. You're gonna let the trams fall into disrepair because you have no incentive to maintain them, you're gonna raise rates probably, you'll probably decrease the frequency of trams, and 
they're going to become less and less useful to people. Pretty soon everyone thinks that it's a good idea to sell the trams to car companies that are going to tear up the tracks and replace them with buses. So the moves that GM and Firestone and Mac and all the rest of them made actually make perfect sense within the context of the economic system they were working in. But that's exactly the problem, isn't it? Our economic system places profit above everything else. Things only work in this system if they generate a profit. And so something like public transit, that's an objective good for our communities, was placed at the altar of profit, and eventually, profit destroyed it. The same way that it destroyed our healthcare system, higher education, housing, and even the planet itself. The only way to solve that problem is to eliminate that profit motive, because as long as that profit motive exists, it's always going to be placed above everything else. It's always going to be number one priority above the welfare of your community, the welfare of your customers and your workers, and even the welfare of the world. It's going to keep driving people to make products that are as low quality as they can get away with and to price them as high as you'll be willing to pay for it. To pay their workers as little money as they're allowed to while working them as hard as they can possibly work. To cut every corner they can cut and cheat every way that they can cheat. Because doing anything else would be less profitable and every institution under capitalism that makes decisions cannot survive without profit. When you need to make a profit, eventually you're always going to have to tear up the trams. In the short term, that means eliminating the acute problems. Maybe the trams specifically don't need to be run for a profit. Maybe we can take those away from the profit actors, let the community decide where to build new trams, and run them as a service, like schools or the post office. That'll solve some of the problems in the short term, but it won't solve all of the problems, and it won't solve them in the long term. You see even now how people are trying to roll back where we've already done that. School vouchers, privatizing the post office, cutting Amtrak's budget. To solve all of the problems, you're going to need to do that across the board. You're going to need to eliminate profit altogether. And you're going to have to take every institution, divorce it from profit, let the people running it and the people affected by it make the decisions about what's going to happen with it, and run it for the good of the community. Because who knows what's better for a community? Corporate oligarchs and politicians, or the people who are living in that community? We can eat around the edges, but that's always going to be half measures. And it's always going to mean that we're in a constant battle with profit trying to roll back any gains that the people make. Profit isn't people. Corporations aren't people. Only people are people. And people are the most important thing in society. Society doesn't exist without people. So I think that it's time that we started acting like people are the most important thing in our society. I think it's high time that we started putting people first. I hope that you enjoyed that. If you think that people should come before profits, you can let us know by hitting that thumbs up button or leaving a comment. You can seize access to all of my videos by subscribing there, and socialized media is linked in the description. And since I do live under capitalism, you can support this channel and help me make more videos like Rebecca S, Mainly, Julie M, Carolyn P, and Stephen M at patreon.com slash Report.